Hey everybody, this is Christian and today I will be showing you all the tech that I'm running in my home lab. We will go over networking, servers, smart home, storage, basically all the projects that I've been working on since I started this YouTube channel. So this will be my new home lab tour in 2023. I hope you will enjoy to get a deeper behind the scenes look at what I'm working on in my home lab, how I've structured my network and how I've built my servers. And while we've covered many of these projects in previous videos here on this channel, which you probably should check out as well, there are a few things that have been changed since then and I need to talk about that. But I also want to share my plans for the future, talk about which further improvements I'm planning for my home lab, because I'm still far away from being finished with it. Trust me, I always find something new to try out. But before we start, I also want to show you this amazing award I recently received from YouTube because we have finally reached the 100,000 subscriber milestone. I think we are now even at 110 or 115. <laughs> and I really don't know what to say other than just thank you so much <laughs> because without you this channel wouldn't be possible at all if so thanks again everybody for subscribing commenting liking the videos it's always helping a ton and a special thanks goes out to all of my supporters on patreon the youtube members and people who are being active on the discord it's so amazing to see how many of you are enjoying these tutorials following my projects and building your own home labs when i look back nearly three years ago when i started this channel i never could have imagined this would have such a big impact in the tech sphere. And now more than 100,000 people are watching my videos. It's just insane. <laughs> but that's also why I'm so excited to keep it going. Yeah? Continue working on my projects and sharing my experience as I'm doing it in this video. And I'm planning a lot of new stuff for 2023, like upgrading all of my servers with new hardware and doing more builds. I could go on and on, but uh, well, I think you wanna see my home lab now, right? <laughs> So this is my server room where nearly all of the devices in my home lab are running. You might recognize a lot of this stuff from my previous videos, for example, when I've built this big server rack somewhere about a year ago. And actually there haven't been so many changes since then. I obviously switched a few cables around and tried to organize it a bit better. But it is still the same open frame server rack from StarTech that I've shown you before, which is indeed a great product that I'm very satisfied with because it's very solid stable and easy to mount. And if you're really serious about running a home lab yourself, I think you should get yourself a server rack. Yeah? It doesn't need to be that big, of course. You can get it in different sizes. Maybe first buy a smaller server rack to just get started with it. But this has probably been the best decision that I've made, that I've bought myself this server rack to build my home lab, because it's just great to have all the servers and networking devices much more organized and easy accessible. At the rear of the server rack, I've also mounted a small PDU for the power supply. So with this, I can connect and power all the equipment inside. I can also track a bit the power consumption of the entire server rack, even though this is not very specific. So I can't really see which port consumes which power exactly. But it's great to have at least some kind of high level overview of what's going on, especially with the current price for electricity in Germany right now. Well. It can get pretty expensive if you don't pay attention to it. And the smaller devices like my network switch I've just mounted directly to the front of the server rack or put on a shelving unit like this router or some other smaller devices. Even though this is a bit of a chaos inside so I'm still trying to find a better way to put these smaller units somewhere else, maybe outside of the server rack, but this is as it looks uh, right now. The bigger servers I've of course mounted with rails so I can move these uh, smoothly in and out of the server rack and that's great for maintenance and changing things inside the server. However, I've made one change that I haven't talked about previously and I want to share it with you today because in the past I've always used regular cage nuts to mount all my devices into the server rack. That's just what I was used to doing. But uh, someone in the comments of one of my videos recommended these rack studs to me and guys, I can't say how much I love them. Uh, rack studs are similar to traditional cage nuts for mounting equipment into server racks, but they are just much more comfortable to mount because you can do it entirely without any tools and that makes it much quicker and easier to use them. It's really straightforward and they can also support up to 20 kilograms of weight. 
And now if you have a server or a network rack at home, just do yourself a favor and get some of these rack studs. Trust me, you won't regret it. And you can also support me when you're buying them from my personal kit page. You will find a link to this page in the video description down below. And there you will find links for most of the devices and components that I've used in my home server builds. For example, in the accessories section, you will find Amazon links for these rack studs here. But you can also find some other parts like my server rack, the patch panel, the storage server and uh, Proxmox server build so just check it out follow me there and it's always helping me if you use some of these links to buy stuff from Amazon but let's now go back to my home lab so that was the server rack and how I have generally mounted all the devices let's uh, start taking a closer look at the networking part as for the networking cables I still have four cut six cables coming up from here going into this patch panel and then I've connected a few devices to them and because this is a sheet shielded patch panel here. I've also connected all the devices via shielded cables of course. The blue ones are usually connected to my regular home network so these are connected to devices like my printer, access points, the TV or PCs. And the green cables are uplink connections so in other words the internet ports. The first one is coming from a home router downstairs in the living room which is a regular Fritz box that I got from my cable ISP Vodafone but there's also a second green cable coming from inside the server rack itself and that's coming from my second home router this is also a fritz box but a black one that i got from my isp one and one and this is unlike the vodafone uplink a dsl uplink so yes i have two separate internet providers at home with two different technologies the one is based on cable and the other one is based on dsl now this isn't always possible in germany as you might know germany has some areas in the country where internet connections can be very slow and sometimes you even don't have the choice between DSL or cable but I'm quite lucky where I'm living right now so I have two internet providers available here and because I'm working full-time from home it's quite important for me to be always online and when there is a problem with one of these connections which does happen from time to time I still have another backup connection that's based on a different technology and that hopefully should work then. As you can see, I have connected both of these green cables, which are coming from these two separate routers, to another single device in my server rack, which is my firewall, the Sophos XGS2100. And this appliance manages my entire network. It also does the load balancing and failover logic for these two internet ports, and it can control the network traffic in my home lab, so I can manage exactly what's allowed to go in and outside. Everything that is passing this firewall can be scanned to detect malware in case one of my servers or clients is infected and it gives me a good visibility of the network traffic in my home lab. But it also does a bit more as it controls my Wi-Fi access points in the network. I currently have two of them, one in the studio and another one in the living room. It also handles all the DHCP and DNS requests in the network. So this firewall is really the central point of my network to control and manage everything. And it's also making my entire network more secure and reliable. I think when you are building a home lab, you should have a firewall running somewhere. Yeah, you can configure many different network features like DHCP. HCP, DNS, VLANs and port forwardings much easier and more granular as you could do it on a regular home router and it will give you more visibility about what's going on in your network. That's pretty important to me. Uh, it might be a bit more complicated to configure all this stuff, but it also teaches you a lot about how to create computer networks. And to just have a bit more capabilities to connect multiple devices, I'm using a managed 24 port PoE switch, also from Sophos. The Sophos XGS firewall and the Sophos switch are connected via two 10 gigabit fiber optical ports, which I have bundled together. So they form a single aggregated trunk port. And I'm using VLANs on the switch switch and on the firewall as well to virtually split the entire network into multiple segments. So that's why I also wanted to have the cut cables in different colors to easily know which device is connected to which VLAN. The blue cables are, as I said, connected to the regular home network devices and are all in one VLAN. But I also have other ports on different VLANs. For example, the gray cables are only connected to my management VLAN and the other two 10 gigabit ports on the switch are connected to my DMZ VLAN, that's where all the servers are connected. 
I don't want to explain all of it now in more detail because I've already made separate videos about this firewall system and also another video just about the VLANs and my software switch. So if you want to have a deep dive into how I've configured this whole stuff with the different VLANs and how that interplays with the firewall, I've put you a link to this video in the description down below. So there I have explained it all in much more detail. But what I haven't talked about yet is that I'm planning to change this entire network setup a little bit. Well, it's not really a small change. Actually, I'm planning to refactor the entire network structure because I want to integrate multiple firewalls into my server rack and also integrate virtual machines into these VLANs. Because currently I only have one network for all of my servers and every virtual machine that I create on my servers, no matter whether this is a production or a Kubernetes cluster or just a testing machine, they are all attached to the same network and that's what I want to change. So I'd like to create separate VLANs for all these environments like production, testing, home, IoT and so on and then I have the ability to add virtual machines to each of these separate VLANs. I don't know when I'm uh, doing that because changing the entire network structure in my home lab that will be a lot of work. <laughs> it will break everything as it is running today but in the far future maybe um, in the second half of this year I should have more time for these projects and do more with networking, security and maybe I'll add one or more other firewall systems or switches to this home lab and do some comparison videos, who knows. But that's it about the networking part in my home lab and before we move on to the next section I quickly want you to have a look at the sponsor of this video Teleport because that's what I'm using for secure access to my home lab. This video is supported by Teleport, a free and open source access proxy that helps you to securely authenticate to all your IT infrastructure like Linux servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications or remote desktop. You can easily protect your accounts with modern security features such as two-factor authentication or a passwordless login and access your services through the browser or the CLI tool with audit logging and session recording. And the best, it's completely free in the community version so you can just download and run it in your entire home lab or if you'd like to use it in your company teleport offers many professional features like auditing single sign on and more it's a great tool so just check it out you will find a link to their website in the description of this video so that was basically the entire network structure for my home lab i already said in another video it's quite an overkill for a small network, to be honest. <laughs> Nobody needs such a huge firewall and adding even more firewalls and switches to this setup might seem even more crazy. But uh, for me, HomeLab is not just about self-hosting or privacy. It's first and foremost a playground that I use for experimenting, especially with networking and security, because that's what I need for my main job. And having a managed switch with VLANs to internet uplink ports and a firewall, that's great to learn how company networks are usually structured and what IT pros do to protect their critical business infrastructure like servers and storage. Uh, don't worry, we will get to servers and storage as well in a minute. But before, I'd also like to talk about another topic, one that I haven't really touched on before on this channel. And this is IoT and smart home. Honestly, I have very limited experience with that. Currently, I have three separate smart home technologies that I'm running in my home lab. I have a Philips U bridge that controls some of the light bulbs in the room. As you can see in the server room, I have some Philips U RGB lights that are automatically turned on by this Philips U motion sensor. I also have a couple of Amazon Echoes across different rooms, mainly for listening to music, turning on the lights on and off. And yeah, I guess you, kn you know what this is all about. And I also just recently have added another system, which is the Bosch smart home system that controls the radiator thermostats in some of the rooms. I still haven't bought too many of them because they are really pricey and actually smart home can become a pretty expensive hobby. <laughs> Originally, me and my wife, we just wanted to have one single Philips U light because when our son was born, we wanted to have a light bulb where we could adjust the brightness during the night and lower it down a bit. Uh, but since that time, we added more and more more stuff to this system of the years because once you get started with smart home you really get used to it and at some point you just want to have more and more. I don't know if that's the same for you guys but at least I'm pretty hooked by smart home technologies right now. I believe it starts getting a real hobby for me and one that makes a lot of fun because I'm interested in the technologies and protocols just like with the rest of my home lab. And as far as I've heard there will be many interesting changes in the smart home area during the next years 
devices, mainly because of new protocol standards that will allow smart home devices to communicate more seamlessly with each other and allow a better vendor independent integration. And I'd love to play around with that in my home lab. Maybe integrate a self-hosted solution like Home Assistant or add some other IoT devices and build custom automations with that. Please don't ask me how exactly that all works. Yeah, as I said, I haven't tried out any of this yet, but it is absolutely another area that I'd love to explore. And I'm sure we can do so many interesting projects with smart home and IoT. If, uh, please, if you have any ideas or maybe tips for me how to get started, because you might have more experience than I have, please let me know in the comments or even better, join our Discord and let's just talk about that because I'd love to hear your ideas and I will probably plan some exciting new projects about these topics somewhere in the middle of this year. I know I might be a bit early to announce something like that, but um, I first want to finish some other projects before seriously stepping into the IoT and smart home world. I have a couple of server builds and automation stuff that I want to do first. And by the way, speaking about that, let's talk about the servers that I'm currently running my home lab and how I'm deploying applications on it. The main server where I'm running most of my applications is this one here. That is the server that I've built myself. When I open the server, you can see inside, it is just a regular desktop motherboard here from ASRock with an AMD Ryzen CPU, more precisely the 3600, which is a six core 12 threads desktop CPU. So this is just a regular desktop PC that you would typically build. And I've just put all of this stuff into a free unit 19 inch server case to mount it easily into my server rack. It also has a 64 gigabytes of memory and an NVMe as well, and also some SSDs for storing data. So with this machine, I have enough computing power and a fast network connection to run all sorts of experiments and applications in my home lab. As an operating system, I'm running Proxmox that probably won't surprise most of you guys. This is a free and open source virtualization solution based on Linux KVM, and that allows me to build any kind of setup that I want on this single server. I can run multiple virtual machines like Linux and Windows servers. As you can see, I have a couple of virtual machines running on it. Mostly I'm running Ubuntu Linux on them. That's the Linux distribution that I just like the most. But I'm also running one Windows Server 2022 with an Active Directory and a Windows 11 client for administrating tasks. Currently, I'm not doing much with this Windows Server, to be honest. I know I had big plans for this, but somehow it lost a bit my attention. Don't worry, I will continue this project once I finish some of the other critical stuff, so maybe also in the second half of this year. But currently, I don't want to commit or promise anything here. There are so many other project ideas that I'd just like to follow. We just talked about changing the entire network, adding firewalls, IoT. Wow, I already have so many projects in my mind. <laughs> but I still want to do at least one or two more videos about this Windows Server at some time and about Active Directory. I hope you don't mind that it takes a bit longer than expected. But what you can expect from me instead are more videos about Linux, Docker and Kubernetes because as you probably know, I'm a big fan of Linux and containerization as well. And that's why inside my virtual Linux servers, I'm also running some Docker containers with applications like my DNS server, my monitoring solution with Grafana and Prometheus, traffic for load balancing and accessing the applications. On my second Docker server, I'm mainly running databases like a MySQL database and Influx database. I also have a high available Kubernetes cluster that's running Argo CD for automatic application deployments. I'm running Portainer there to manage all of my running containers and also Homer, which is a simple home server dashboard that I absolutely love. Uh, with that, I can easily access all of my services and administrative uh, web interfaces from one single page. That's very nice. And I'm always changing things here. Yeah, I'm always destroying old containers, deploying new demo applications, mostly for making tutorials and videos for you, but sometimes also for running my own applications and some smaller things that I want to self-host. Again, I have said it previously and I will say it again, I'm not running this for privacy reasons or hosting my own open source tools or something like that. I still 
use a lot of cloud services and managed applications as well. So you won't see a Nextcloud container here or a Plex Media server, at least not for my production home servers. But I'm very interested instead in deploying containers in Kubernetes or building my own CI CD pipelines or scripting and automation. That's also one of the reasons why I'm using Proxmox, for example. Proxmox is just great for provisioning virtual machines with automation tools like Terraform or HashiCorp's Packer. I know there are literally hundreds of different possibilities and solutions you could think about as well, like having LXC containers on Proxmox or running a completely different system like, uh, like ESXi or XAPNG. I've talked about some of these solutions in my video about home server operating systems, but for me it just makes the most sense to run Proxmox and I'm not planning to change this setup in the near future. I will continue running Proxmox as my main home server operating system. I'm just planning to change one thing and that is upgrading this server in a couple of weeks and the plan is to upgrade it with a new CPU and motherboard, the one that I got out of my old PC. Because some of you might already know, I recently bought myself a Mac Mini with the Apple's M2 Pro chip. It's absolutely amazing. By the way, I will also talk about this topic and why I've switched my old Windows PC to a Mac now in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, because of this upgrade, I didn't need my PC's CPU and mainboard anymore. And as this is an Intel 12700, which is not only a bit more powerful than the older Ryzen 3600 in my current server, it also has some other nice advantages like the integrated graphics card and that it should consume a bit less power than the AMD CPU. I think this will be a nice upgrade for my Proxmox server. Of course, once I'm starting the migration, I'll make a new video about this, so that's gonna be interesting for everybody who wants to turn old desktop PCs into home servers, because I just refuse to buy expensive server equipment for my home lab. I know many people like to use professional server hardware in home labs, and you can get some older servers pretty cheap from eBay, but I believe this is not really necessary, and it has also many disadvantages, like the noise that these systems make, or the old used server equipment is usually very powerful, hungry. That's the reason why I've built all of my servers at home with desktop PC hardware. And the same is also true for my storage server in the home lab. So yes, I'm not only running this Proxmox server in my home lab, I'm also running a separate NAS machine. And as I said, even though this looks like a more professional server equipment, the storage server is also a desktop PC inside. I just bought a bigger 19-inch rack case with a hot swap backplane that can support up to 24 hard drives. That's more than enough. And inside I'm using a storage controller to connect them all to the motherboard. This is also an AMD Ryzen 3600 with 64 gigabytes of ECC memory and a 10 gigabit network card that is connected to my sofa switch. So it is very similar to the Proxmox server. As for the hard drives, I've built a storage pool with 12 4TB hard drives and a smaller pool with 4 1TB SSDs. I'm mainly using these faster SSDs for storing NFS shares that can be accessed by my Docker containers and Kubernetes deployments. And the bigger and a bit slower storage pool I'm using for my video files, uh, backups and whatever else I need to store in my home lab. As an operating system, I'm running TrueNAS Scale, which is a free and open source NAS system that allows me to manage all of this stuff, like the storage pools, applications, network shares, backups, all in a nice and clean web UI. It's absolutely amazing. I'm not going into too much detail here because I've recently done many videos about my storage server, some about all of the hardware and uh, storage pool upgrades, others about applications as well. So there is much more that you can watch if you're interested into TrueNAS scale and building NAS systems. I'll put you all of these videos in the description as well. And this is honestly an area where I don't feel like there's much more for me to upgrade. I'm still using only a fraction of what's possible there. I still have more than enough space left on these storage pools. So if I could, I would probably replace the Ryzen 3600 with a smaller and more efficient CPU. Uh, maybe that could be an idea for another video, but currently um, I'm pretty happy as it is today. And TrueNAS runs very smoothly without any issues on this machine. 
Originally, my idea was to run a few virtual machines or applications on this NAS system as well, but I've realized that I'm probably not the everyday TrueNAS scale user. I'd like to run and administrate my own Kubernetes cluster, build automation scripts with Ansible, Terraform to provision virtual machines, and honestly, TrueNAS scale isn't great for that task. It's more this worry-free, simple click-through interface, which is also nice, but it's not meant to be an advanced system for virtualization or container orchestration. Uh, that's why I'm using this storage server just as a NAS and not really more. So most of my future projects will be about the storage part itself. Yeah, I want to learn more about network shares, about backups, permission settings and so on. Maybe I'll do a few videos about apps or virtual machines from time to time, but it's not my current focus. Uh, but I think that was everything that I'm running in my home lab. Yeah, we covered the server rack, we covered the networking setup, smart home, servers and storage. I know I haven't shown you all of the applications and services that I'm running in my home lab, but just because there will be so many changes within the next few months, I have so many ideas for application deployments that I'm changing on my servers. And of course, I will turn them all into separate videos. So be sure there will be much more content around these topics as well. At some point, I should probably do another home lab tour, maybe at the end of this year or in the beginning of next. Actually, I think it should be a yearly video that I can do because next year I'm pretty sure my home lab will look completely different from now. <laughs> but that's the beauty of a home lab, at least for me, because it's a playground, all to learn and experiment with new technologies. And I hope this video was inspiring to you and it was fun for you to see what I'm running in my home lab. Please tell me what do you think about it. I'm sure I'll catch you in my next video. This will be something completely different. So stay tuned and thanks everybody for watching. Have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.